Hello and welcome to Chateau Dreams, our family adventure story of moving here to the south of France in 2020. If you like the vlog, please don't forget to subscribe. Vlog 32, rescued by Jean-Marc. Just a quick note for this episode, it features the peacock's wings being clipped amongst other things. Please don't worry, it doesn't hurt them. Hello everyone and welcome back to Chateau Dreams. My goodness, look at this rain. Isn't it awful? I've got to go over today, arm in plaster with Soph, Ross and um, John Mark to try and capture those peacocks. So I've got no idea how that's going to go, but we've really got to get it done. Luckily, that's not for a couple of hours. So I'm planning on nipping down with you now to see how Kira and Ruth are getting on with the renovations in the little house. And if you're interested on taking a tour of the little house, Petit Bataille, if you look for Chateau Tour 7 in the content. We've got around sanding off the wires and then putting the stain on what to match it up with the rest of the sheet. Yeah. You're doing a really good job. <laughs> it's going really well. Get there. Yeah. And you've masking taped up as well, because I'm so short-sighted I didn't realise earlier, so I had a marginal panic, so apologies. That but it looks well. really good. It looks terrible from a distance, but we swear. So. <laughs> and you're doing a really good job. Thank you very, very much. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it later, but it looks great now. Thanks so much. Well, Aunt Ruth and Kira are doing a fabulous job. It's such a shame I can't help at the moment. I feel terribly guilty about it. Sorry about the volume. The new microphones are ordered. Well, look, the weather has improved. It's still a bit windy. Windy, but I can see that somebody, Badger, is making the most of it. It's going to be so much easier to deal with the birds in the sunshine. In the meantime, we've had some great news in the park. It's a glorious sunny day um, and I've managed to get some clothes on even though my arm is broken. So yeah, all is good. In good news this week, the quince tree that I've been watching and hoping is going to produce some fruit has finally produced some fruit. Fruit, so let's go and have a look at that. The difference has really been that I pruned it uh, with my mother in spring this year, and also I've been putting a good layer of well-rotted compost all around the base for the last three years, so. That's made a huge difference, compost, pruning. There, and there's some more a lot higher up. They're actually quite furry, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you could use them for making quince jelly or quince jam, which is, um, very, very good with cheese. I've never made quince jam before, but that's something we can try. There they are. They look a bit like a pear. They're very, very hard. And in Victorian times, the scent of one used to be used to scent rooms. So they look very healthy which I am pleased about, obviously. This one just through there. One of the naughty ponies has been helping himself. And look what he's done to this side of the tree. I think he's decided he rather likes quinces too. Look, there we go. So he's munched all those off and has taken the leaves. But it's all right, because the rest of the tree is incredibly healthy. So it's not a great disaster. And I hope he's had a lovely time. Anyway, Sophie and Ross are waiting, so I'd better zip off to deal with those peacocks with them. For those that haven't seen it, our two large male peacocks have decided, whilst normally staying with us, to go and visit our neighbours, to quite the concern of our neighbours. So um, we're trying to get them as quickly as possible. And um, none of us have been able to get them yet, so that's why we're calling in the expert. Um, yes, let's see. Jean-Marc is our next-door neighbour. He's fabulous, and he actually has a number of geese that are probably far more terrifying for anyone who's met them than peacocks. So our neighbours have managed to corner them in the workshop and here is John Mark with Texas Sophie approaching the first. You can see the baskets ready on the floor and obviously the peacock's been cornered. These guys can really, really fly. So um, yes, that's why Sophie is providing a virtual barrier. This process has been made much more dangerous by the fact there's a very nasty piece of agricultural equipment with blades just by John Mark. Of course there is. Now it's on to number two. As you can see, I'm fairly useless flapping around, but Sophie is doing a much, much better job. 
And well, of course, Jean-Marc, the expert, I can't believe he's managed to do this in about five minutes, literally. Whereas, you know, Soph and I were here for three hours and also the Irish girls have been with me with Sophie. And I mean, we've been running around the news fields like lunatics. So I'm just delighted that um, we're bringing this to a pause. It's, it's great. There we are. Look at that expert. Second one, hopefully going into the box. And then I guess we're going to drive them back round to the castle and put them in one of the buildings in the back for a while. There's the one at South Court. Oh, yeah. I did arm later. <laughs> you do not know how lucky you are to still be alive. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's a relief. Let's get them back home for the wing clipping. So to be clear, the purpose of clipping a bird's wings isn't to prevent flight completely, but to ensure that they are unable to achieve or sustain upward flight. So that prevents escape, unwanted roaming, which is what we've got the problem with, and exposure to dangerous situations. So they still can get themselves out of scrapes. It doesn't hurt. That's the most important thing to know. But I'm hoping it will keep them safe because obviously they're causing a huge nuisance and uh, Jean-Marc is an absolute expert in doing it. So it doesn't hurt. You can see the birds are really calm. And then after this, they're actually going to be going into their new adobe hacienda of uh, the pigeon air and um, they're going to have a big run which is 20 meters by 10 meters and they'll be able to come out of there into the back garden be hand fed and then go in and away at night so it really really is the safest option for them at the moment because I, I'm very concerned, obviously, or we're very concerned with our neighbours, a little bit frustrated with them, which is totally fair enough. Um, we don't want them to cause any damage or alternatively hurt themselves. So that's what the issue is. And Sophie, as you can see, is really brave. Normally I'd hang on to the legs, but Sophie's very kindly agreed to do it. Um, Ross is bird phobic, so that, that wouldn't have helped. And um, obviously I can't do it with my arm. So thank you very much, Sophie. Thank you, Jean-Marc. You are all legends. Thank you. And thank you, Ross. So there we go. So I'm just going to wander over now and show you a picture of where they're going to be living um, which I think you guys know anyway but just in case you haven't seen it look see they're okay they're a little bit frustrated but they're fine so this is where they're going to be moving into in a minute which will be great nice run the other side as I said which is 20 meters by 10 meters and they can come out into this area and be hand fed by us and into the adjoining back garden so yeah it should be okay not as much fun as flying free but then they've been getting up to mischief, so um, you can't have it all. Hey, Badger, what do you think? Good boy. And no, you haven't stepped into Alice in Wonderland. Those crazy flowers are actually the size of my head, believe it or not. So they are enormous. 